when an electrophile adds to a double or triple bond, it occurs via a mechanism called electrophilic addition. Remember, an electrophile is defined as an electron pair acceptor. This usually means it will have an atom with a partial positive charge, so that it can attract negatively charged electrons. Let's take a look at the mechanism for the reaction between ethene and bromine. You might notice that the bromine molecule doesn't have a permanent dipole on it. The two bromine atoms have the same electronegativities, so the bonding pair of electrons that they share is going to sit right in between the two of them. This means that neither atom will have a partial positive or negative charge on it. So, where is the electrophile? What happens is, as the bromine molecule approaches the ethene molecule, the electrons in the double bond repel the electrons in the bromine-bromine bond, resulting in a delta plus in the closest bromine atom and a delta minus in the furthest bromine atom. We call this an induced dipole. This delta plus bromine can attract electrons, so it acts as the electrophile. So, as the bromine molecule approaches the double bond and the temporary dipole is formed, the electrons from the pi bond in the carbon-carbon double bond will be attracted towards the delta plus bromine atom. This creates a new bond between a carbon atom and the bromine atom. As this bond forms, the electrons in the bromine-bromine bond are repelled all the way onto the delta minus bromine atom, which breaks the bromine-bromine bond and leaves a negatively charged bromide ion. Afterwards, we're left with this. A new bond has been formed between the bromine atom and one of the carbons. The other carbon atom has lost electrons where the double bond used to be, so it's left with a positive charge. A lone pair of electrons on the negatively charged bromide ion will be attracted towards this positively charged carbocation, and another bond will form here. This will leave us with 1,2-dibromoethane. So, overall, two bromine atoms have added to the alkene to leave a halogenoalkane. The two molecules which reacted here are symmetrical, so there's only one possible product. Let's take a look at a more complicated example, with the reaction between propene and hydrogen bromide. Hydrogen bromide has a permanent dipole, because bromine is more electronegative than hydrogen. So the hydrogen is always delta plus, and the bromine is always delta minus. This means the hydrogen atom acts as the electrophile. So, as the HBr molecule approaches the double bond, the electrons from the pi bond in the carbon-carbon double bond will be attracted towards the delta plus hydrogen atom. Just like before, this causes the electrons in the hydrogen-bromine bond to be repelled all the way onto the bromine atom to leave a bromide ion. However, there are now two possibilities for where the carbocation will form, depending on which carbon atom the hydrogen forms a bond with. Either the carbocation can form on the terminal carbon, or it can form on the central carbon. In either case, the lone pair on the bromide ion will be attracted towards the carbocation to form a new bond. This will leave us with either 1-bromopropane or 2-bromopropane. In reality, both of these products will form, but one is more likely to form than the other. The way to tell which product is more likely to form is by looking at the two carbocation intermediates. This one is known as a primary carbocation because the positively charged carbon atom is only bonded to a single alkyl group, whereas this one is known as a secondary carbocation because the positively charged carbon atom is bonded to two different alkyl groups. Alkyl groups are electron donating meaning they'll push electrons towards the positively charged carbon atom. The more alkyl groups there are, the more electrons are being pushed, and therefore the more the positive charge is stabilised. For this reason, primary carbocations are the least stable, followed by secondary carbocations, and then tertiary carbocations are the most stable. So, if we look at our carbocation intermediates, we can see that this one is the most stable of the two, 
so it'll be more likely to form. This means that 2-bromopropane will be our major product and 1-bromopropane will be our minor product. This can all be summarized by Markovnikov's rule, which states that when adding a hydrogen halide to an alkene, the halogen will tend to bond to the most alkyl-substituted carbon atom. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to support the channel and let me know in the comments if you have any questions.